In all my years in creating dashboards, be it in Excel or Power BI, there's always been a frustration of where people always wanted to be able to look back at the previous 12 months of whatever report they're looking at and not have a snapshot of that particular month looking back over the last 12 months and then having to refer to an old file to actually see what the previous 12 months looked like for the last month. And this was always one of the gripes that the clients had in my previous company. So what I'm gonna do is show you how I did exactly that in Power BI. Let's head over to my Power BI desktop. So as you can see here, I've got two sets of metrics. I've got total sales and margin percent. So you can see it works with percentage and it works with whole numbers as well. It can work with anything that you can put in as a number within your visualization. You don't even have to do this as 12 months. You could do it three months, six months, 24 months, it's up to you because all it is is just changing what is the number of months it looks back at. What I've created is a trend over the current past 12 months versus the exact same time period 12 months previous. So for December 2017 in this case, it's then comparing against December 2016. And then that can go all the way back. But that's no different to say if you selected a year and the year ended. So if I was to change this to a month within the middle of year, so let's say like August, you can now see it goes August and then it shows September. So it hasn't stopped. It's gone actually into the previous year as well. And the same for the table. And all it's doing is then going August 2017 to August 2016. And if we come over here, it's actually looking at September 2016 against September 2015. So you can just keep playing around and keep moving into different ones and then the only time when it won't give you what the previous one looks like is when you go beyond what is the actual time period so here we go so it cuts off so if it never went before in this case the data set runs out at the beginning of january 2014 going backwards you won't have any previous because there isn't any but it also cuts off you can come all the way down to here and only show you the one if we go to december it shows you the whole one we will click on January, you see we now have a little spot there where we got January because it's going back to 2014. And if we kind of click on February, we can see these are updating all along with all that information. The first thing you want to actually do, you need to make a copy of your dim date table. You want that set up anyway because you want that to be the thing that's actually going to be driving your dates anyway. But all you have to do is just do a reference. So you can take what is your dim date table and then you just right click. And then if you just go down to reference, and then create one and then in this case i've just put in brackets four slices just so then we know what this is and then also if you wanted the same setup like what i have where i've taken the month and year is going to be my main driving point so instead of you having to select year and a month you can just select the month and year while you're going through i created this in my date table just by simply taking date to text and then doing date and then in brackets three capital m's to give you the first letters of the month and then a space and then yy lowercase to give you the end of the year and then it does it as text because that's what you want to have set at and then once you've got that in that's going to give you your filters and then you can just select month and year and also it can be your name on the bottom of your actual charts as well and then to actually sort it just ensure that you've got a means to be able to sort in month order so you want to be able to have something that allows you to do month year sort so in this case all i've done to do this one is i've created again date dot to text and then i've used the date and then all i've done as text is year full year so four y's and then two capital m's to then give you the number and then that gives you a nice key that you can sort by so it's always running in the order so because it's text it's going to do it alphabetically remember then then you can set what the sort is just like this so if we come back we go into our date table come down to month year and then in here we do sort by column we can see month year sort and then you want to do that on both because you want it to happen with your dim date table and that reference date table which you got here and the reason why we have this extra one is we need a date table that is not linked to the table so we have our dim date table here in our model that's all linked but if we come across over to here we can see this one it's not connected to anything so you don't want this to be connected and driving any of the date changes you just want it to be able to be used in your measure so you can dynamically make the chart move when you select a particular month and year 
So once you've got those two set up, we can then start using this DAX formula that I managed to find from another YouTuber called Rick. I've actually linked the actual YouTube video that I learned this actual code from because I didn't write this. I didn't come up with this one. I totally taken it from that particular one. So I'm not going to take credit for it, but I then use this to be able to build out what I've made here, which is what I'm showing. What this is, is you're going to be using whatever measure you want to use in here. So I've got total sales, which you can see is here. That's the driver I've got for this table. And then all that total sales is, is just sum of the fact sales table sales. So it's just whatever the amount is, whatever your metric is, that's where you put it. And then all I've done is call it total sales last 12 months. Simple as. And then all you want to do is put in different variables. Now the variables you need are max of your dim date table. And that's your actual dim date table, not the slicer one we created because we want that to actually give you what the max is. And then I've called that variable max date and then equals max and then dim underscore date date. That'd be whatever your date column is. And then another variable where I've put max date last 12 months. And this is where you can set if you want it to be 12 months, it could be six months, it could be three months, it could be whatever months. All you have to do is do end of month or EO month as the thing. And then max date variable, which is this one here. So whatever you call your variable for the max date here, just pull it in and then a comma and then minus whatever the amount of months you want. So this, in this case, we're doing 12. If you want to do 13, if you want to do 24, if you want to do six, just change it here. It doesn't have to be 12 months. And then we're doing what the final result is. Now, normally I'll put this as a return and then do it there, but it's actually quite handy having them separately anyway. That way you can interchange because if you wanted to sort of test to see, oh, is Max Date pulling me the right information? You can just pull it in there, Max Date and everything. So actually it's good, good practice to actually do your result as a separate variable. But anyway, in here, what this is iterating through is basically going, if has one value is selected, and this is where we start using our slicer because the slicer one is actually the date we have in here. So this date here and this date here is coming from the dim date or slicers one. So it's not using the dim date one. This is where the slicers are. This is where this particular measure comes into play. So what you do is ensure that you're selecting whatever you want to be your driver along here. In this case, like I said, I set up the month year because it just looks better and it's a lot easier for people to navigate with. And it uses up less space on the chart as well. If you use the whole name or you try to do it with like the number of month or something like that. It will confuse people sometimes, at least if you just do it as the month name, first three letters, it looks really good. So that's why I've done that. And so then that's why you've got this set up. So then all you do is run that through there. And then basically going, if this, whatever one is selected and max date of the date is equal to or less than max date. So that's whatever been selected because your filter, whatever your slice is going to be, is going to be from the dim date table. So that's why it's doing that. So it's basically going, is the max of your dim date table equal to or less than? And then is the min greater than the last 12 months? So it's basically going, here's the end point. Here's the start point. I want the data in the middle. And that's what that's bringing out. So all you're getting is has one value for month year and max of max date and then min of max date last 12 months or whatever amount of months you want. That's all it needs to go in there. And then if that is the case, then you want to go is total sales under calculate. So what we do is do a comma and then within calculate. So this is going to be if true, this is the result we want. And then if not, it's going to be blank. So this is the key point here. Under here, you're creating a calculate of total sales, but setting it so when you change it, it changes dynamically with whatever you're selecting for your beginning point of your last 12 months. And then once you've added in where the calculate is, you put in total sales and then a comma, and then you want to filter and then all, which will remove all logic from dim date month name, dim date year, and dim date month year. Now, the reason to add the extra ones in is this will help with overriding if there's any other particular slices set or any filters set, but also when selected and it's trying to look back, you want it to be able to pick up that it goes into a different year. So it's good practice to actually include that as well and month name because we have month name there, but it's just and then 
if for whatever reason those two end up getting in there or they play they play will play some form of part when you are filtering you want to be able to remove that filter context which is where all comes in so make sure that you take that out there so if you find that when you do it and you're selecting say january and then you're not getting the previous year showing up most likely because you haven't put in year and possibly the month name but really it's the year that's probably driving that problem there so that's if you ever come across those problems just start putting in what could be a possible filter that you have on your page that might be stopping that from happening and then this will actually remove the filter content and then once that is done we then we're filtering by that and then we want to filter if it's the case of now we've done remove it we now want it to go ah if month name year is selected then we want it to know that it matches what's been selected there with what's been showing up within the dim date slicer table so those two once that equals the same it will select it and then it will give you what is your last 12 months and then as i said you do close bracket and then you get blank if that's not the case and then you return and then you get the result and that's how you get this line here and this information here so when you switch through it it all changes and you get the result now how do you do it so you get the previous year it's exactly the same it's just you change what measure you use so if you remember in here we had total sales to do previous all you need to do is have a measure that shows you the previous 12 months or basically that point previous so in this case because we're selecting month year we want to have something that looks at what is that month last year and then all you have to do to do that is do last year which is all i've done is total sales and then just giving it another name of last year and then within it i've just taken the total sales within calculate and then done the same period last year and then the dim date then all it's doing is looking to that month last year and giving you it and then all you have to do is copy over all this because if we look i've going back and forth what do you see change just the name see just added in last year and then goes and then if you look down here you see total sales and then all I've done is put in the total sales last year. And then that gives you that result. It's that simple. Once you've got that particular DAX already set up, you can apply it to everything. And the same goes for margin. I did exactly the same thing. You just go into margin and then you've got it there. So you can see margin last year is exactly the same code. And then margin is exactly the same code. So once you've done it and got it working, all you have to do is just change the name here. And then you've got it for whatever metric you want to use. And then you're probably wondering with the table, how am I getting this dynamic changing where you get the different conditional formatting showing here? Because what I'm doing is basically going within that 12 month period, which month had the highest amount, which month had the lowest amount. And that's where you get in the chain. And how you do that is you want to be able to set some conditional formatting with a one if it's lower and two if it's higher amounts to so basically min and max. And how you do that is using variables again. Love our variables. And basically, all you have to do is create a variable, which is going to be creating a calculate table. So basically, whatever's kind of selected for it, it's going to just then aggregate a table that's going to then add on what is the amount. So this is going to be a column that's going to give you the amount and then give you a result. And then we want to be able to tell which amount is going to come up as the max and which is gonna come out as the min. So how you do this is you do whatever you wanna call your variable. We go in calculate table, then add columns, and then the summarize we have to use again for the date table for slices, and then selecting what it is that we're gonna be using. So first you need to be able to select what your table is under summarize. Then you want to then select under that what the actual column you're gonna be using as your driver. You only need to use the one that's gonna be in the table here. If you wanna do it so it switches between different ones, you can, you just need to ensure that that's included as well. And then all we're doing is the column name we're gonna call amount, and then we're putting in what the total sales was in the last 12 months. So it gives you that sort of thing. So basically it's just creating you virtual table where it's aggregating everything giving you that result so it's almost literally looking like this and then it's working out once it's giving you that table this is what it's going to look like and then it gives you the result of that particular table now 
that doesn't tell us which one is the greatest. We can see, but we want to be able to set it as conditional format. So how we do that is then we use that column that we've created to be able to look at it and go in this table. So we call this one min value under another variable equals min x because we're using a table so that's when you need to use x and then we're doing the variable here val so it's giving you the actual calculation here so it's the whole table and then we're just focusing on the actual amount that's there so it's going like oh let's look at the table look at the column which one has the min amount and then this one does the max amount so it's max x exactly the same thing and then we want to just create another variable that's basically just giving you what is total sales so that's whatever measure you're using in this particular context and we're using here the last 12 months you can do the same with the last 12 months last year as well we just need to just create another measure for that and then we just do a variable that does our result and then all we're doing is using switch which if you don't know what switch is switch is like if and then all it's doing is basically going if it's this this and if it's this this and it's giving you a result of one and two so it's basically going whatever's min do one and whatever's max do two so then when you go in your conditional formatting all you have to do is set it to if equals one make red if equals two make green because it's the min and max so that's how this one works and then if i show you what that looks like in the conditional formatting we come down to cell elements we then do select the one we want and we do background color and then all you have to do is go down to rules and then within what field should this be based on you just find that measure that we just created there and then all you do whatever you've got for your min which would be one and max would be equal two you just do equals one equals two select as numbers and then select the colors you want in this case the lowest amount i've done is red and the highest amount i've done is green and it's as simple as that to actually get that dynamically move because it's all set looking at the different slices so when you create your chart and table you just have to remember that your filter is always going to be your dim date table so for the month and year in this case but in your charts and tables you need to be using the one where it's the dim date for slices month and year and then that will aid in the actual movement dynamically when we change everything here like this and then for the other conditional formatting all i've done is just do the logic of if it's less than zero then red and if it's greater than zero green and then if you wanted to have whatever the month was with a dynamic changing title all you have to do is just create your title and then within quotation marks just put whatever you want to call it we're going to call it total sales here in this case and then do an and sign and then we just want to format what is total sales and then is selected value will be whatever values here because it doesn't matter about the four slices table now because all it's doing is just looking at the month what is selected then all you do is do the and sign format total sales and then put the format in one in here i've got dollar sign and then with when it's a larger amount then you put a comma in and then and and then in and then the year so then the month and year is selected so you do selected value and whatever you select here will be what shows up here and that's how you get that and then to actually add it all you have to do is go up to here once you select on the chart or the table depending on where you want to pull it go to general go titles and then under text you'll see this little conditional format click under here find the measure that you just created to do that drops in and there you go you have your dynamic title to go along with your dynamic charts so i hope you found this video useful and if you did please give a like and subscribe if you want to carry on your analytical journey check out these videos over here where i show you more power bi tricks and tips and as always until next time